Good morning. Monday morning. School girl sampler. That is so hard for me to say. School girl sampler. My goodness, I've been saying it for how many weeks now? Lots of them. Uh, we're on block 69 and 70. Woo-hoo! Uh, summer solstice is the first one, and right and left is the second one. Isn't that funny? Right and left. I don't know where she came up with that, but anyway. On this summer solstice, uh, it's kind of fun because of the negative and the positive here. <clears throat> it causes this diagonal line. It would be very uh, fun to swap them and then put them together. And then you'd have this fun little uh, pinwheel in the middle here. So uh, if you want to try that, you could make four of these and put flip the darks over to this side and then keep two of them on this side and two of them on that side and play around with that. That'd be lots of fun. <clears throat> this one's not very hard. This one's a little bit tricky. So we're going to spend a little bit more time on this one. It doesn't look tricky, but it is. Especially if you're one of those people that sew by the picture and don't read the instructions. I don't think there's probably anybody out there like that. Do you? Uh, I might be one of those people. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to remake mine because I didn't pay attention. I'm definitely a picture sewer. I'm a picture sewer. You better believe it. Sew by the picture, then go back and read by what they and said. Then, when it doesn't work out, <laughs> then, then you think, what? The why didn't that work out? I better go back and read the instructions. Yeah, they write the instructions for a reason. You know, people at home, I write patterns, so, you know, I'm, I'm always... Thinking, why don't I read the pattern instead of just going by the picture? But oh well. You know, old habits are hard to break. This uh, uh, block, though, is just consistent of three half square triangles and then some rectangles and squares. And I went ahead and I sewed the half square triangles because we've done it a million times. I used my tape so I didn't have to draw the line. If you have to, you can draw a line. Sew a quarter inch on one side, a quarter inch on the other. But I already did that on mine to save some time today. I'm going to get my little fun ruler that I love so much. The Quilton Day fun ruler. It's got a nice quarter inch on the <clears throat> outside so that allows me to go ahead and cut my block in half. Now on the big one, we're only going to use one of them. We're not going to use, you know when you make uh, half square triangles this way, you get two. We're only going to use one. But we'll save this other one for another day. We'll, we'll do something with it, who knows, but we'll do something with it. Then I'm going to square it up and uh, she should tell you how big to square it up to. And uh, I'm going to just use my fancy schmancy little square up ruler here. You know I love it. Cut off my uh, corn cobs. Corn kernels, not cobs. That'd be the whole... Whew, don't want to do that. Then you will need both of these little ones. Again, she tells you what to square them up. If she doesn't, they have to, they have to go coordinate with this. And then they have to court the big one has to coordinate with that. So you can look at those measurements and find out <clears throat> if she doesn't tell you what these square up to. You can find out by the piece that's surrounding them. That's always a good hint when you're reading a pattern and they don't tell you what size to uh, square them up. <clears throat> it's frustrating when they don't fit together because you don't know how to square what size to square them up to. I've been watching a lot of music videos. Uh, Christmas. You've been watching MTV? No. Christmas on my iPad. And Celine Dion, man, she can sing, can't she? Now, I hear that she's not feeling well. She's not well. But uh, <clears throat> she can belt out those Christmas songs. Woo! I love to hear her sing. Did you ever go to Vegas and watch her perform? No. Have you? Uh-uh. I've never seen her perform in Vegas. Have you ever been to Vegas? Uh-huh. Everybody ought to go to Vegas once in their lifetime. Okay, now, let's come down here to this block down here, and we're going to do these uh, little half-square thingamajigs, half-square triangles, but they're made differently. <clears throat> and I wanted to show you a little trick. If I can remember how these go back together. Okay. 
like they once were a square. See that? They once were a square. And what I did was I laid them together, I laid the two colors together, right, uh, right sides together before I cut them. And then when I cut them diagonal to diagonal, they're all ready to sew. I don't have to mess with uh, putting the right sides together, they're all ready. So that's a pretty little, uh, nice little tip. And then, <clears throat> in this instance, they all get sewn the same way. So I'm going to set this one aside because I already sewed it. So this one. I'm going to be careful. I've got my uh, machine back, the one I'm used to, so my single hole plate. So I'm not scared that I'm going to pull that uh, point down into my feed dogs. And just sew that. If anybody's having anything good for a Christmas dinner, let me know your address. I'll be over. Now, I want to know, are you a, a turkey at Thanksgiving and a ham at Christmas? Or do you have ham both times or do you have turkey both times? You just need to let us know. Because <clears throat> inquiring minds want to I know. I think I want to make a lasagna. Oh, ho, ho, ho. What, what time is that going to be ready, Peter? Yeah, I think I want to make a lasagna. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah, what time is Because you that know, I mean, and it... You have leftovers for days when you make a lasagna. Yeah, yeah. don't avoid the qu uh, the question here, Peter. What time will that be ready? I have no idea. Yeah, I'll see. Okay, you want to uh, cut your little... Oh, you know what? I think I sewed that one. Oh, no, it's on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay. Cut the little uh, kernel off. Reducing some of that bulk. There you go. <clears throat> Now we're ready to press open. Didn't forget my clapper this time. Got it right here. I'm going to press open my half square triangles that I made earlier. <clears throat> that I just now squared up. Oh, I just love little half square triangles that are an inch and a half that finish an inch. Ugh, so cute. <laughs> I've made them where they finish a half an inch. They are very cute when they finish a half an inch, but they're tedious little things. You could work for... Those are the ones Are those the ones you trim the seam allowance to eighth of an inch? Yes, definitely. So you get it to work? Definitely. I remember yeah. you saying something You about still that. sew it a quarter of an inch, but then but when then you, you go trim it... You got to trim it. You trim it away. to an eighth to get rid of all that bulk. I remember you saying something about that. Mm. Sorry, coughed in my show in my um, arm. I thought you were going to say cough in your quilt. No, I coughed in my sleeve <laughs> so that Peter won't catch this, whatever it is. I got a sore throat today a little bit. I've been wearing my mask, but I didn't think you guys could understand a word I was saying if I wore my mask. I took my brace off because I figure you guys are tired of seeing my brace. So, you know, trying to be normal. It's not easy for me. I feel sorry for the Grinch, don't you? He was born with a heart too small. It's just the saddest thing. A heart too small. Uh huh. And then uh, at my um, um, veterinarian, they're getting their pictures taken instead of with Santa with uh, the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to lay this out because if I don't, this would be a block that could get really mixed up really quick. So I'm going to lay that out like it needs to be. Paying attention to where my darks go and where my lights go. Because if I don't, that could be, you know, a little bit of a, a mix up. I don't want that. So I'm now I'm going to treat it just like a nine patch. I've already sewed these together. I've already sewed that together. So now I just have to sew this onto this. 
comes a little nine patch. I love it the way we break it down. It's a pretty block. I like this Yeah, one. it is a nice block and uh, versatile. I think it's a very versatile block. So then I'm going to sew this on. Not doing a lot of pinning because there's not really a lot of seams underneath me and it's such little pieces. And I just love it when they all just fit right together like a little puzzle. Anybody got puzzles on their Christmas list? You know, that it's quite a tradition. People, uh... <clears throat> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, my friend Jennifer Cunningham, she gets her dad a, a uh, puzzle every year for Christmas. And then, you know, Christmas Day, they set it up. Then he works on it for however long. Okay, now, I'm, I'm looking at my, uh, the second block, this right and left. This blue is my stripe here because that's the only striped fabric I had in this whole collection that I'm using. So I kind of used that. I hadn't used it before, so this was a good opportunity here at the end to put that in. Now you normally wouldn't just pick a fabric willy-nilly at the end to put in because nothing else would go with it. Except for this collection, <laughs> there are things that I've used that are this same value and color. So it's not going to be one of those things that's just going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's going to go with other fabrics that I've put in. It's just a different pattern. So... Yeah, don't wait until the end to throw in something new uh, because it might stick out and not be <clears throat> not be pleasing to the eye. Now, I did pin that because I had a seam with a seam that I needed to match. I'm going to go ahead and sew this other one on. Okay, I've got a pin in it, but I want to make sure that these are the, where they're supposed to be. Probably for a little extra insurance, I should have pinned them, but I didn't. Living fa life in the fast lane. Woohoo! Go, Dawn, go! Okay, and then I'm going to put the other side of this on. Hey, Dawn. Yes. You're a rule follower. I try to be. I mean, if there's a rule, you follow it, right? I try to. You know, I won't. And you like it when there are there are rules, I right? I do like it when there's rules. So okay. everybody knows Question. what to expect from everybody. Question. Yep. If the speed limit's 55, what are you driving? 55. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Dawn. Until. I'm so proud of you. Until I get to talking. If really? somebody's in the car and I really? start talking, the really? faster I talk, the faster I drive. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I get into trouble because then all of a sudden I'm going 80 miles an hour. <laughs> And I look down and go, oh my gosh, I'm going 80 miles an hour. I'm talking too fast. Slow down. So when you're driving, <laughs> you're driving and Tammy's in the passenger seat, how fast are you driving? Oh, we, I've been known to get up to 80 before. And, and I that's just, the truth. Now you behave yourself. She drove with me. Where did we go? Colorado? No, where did we go? Missouri. Missouri. She went to Missouri with me. Yeah, I would, I, I get to talk and then I can't, uh, I, I just, the faster I talk, the faster I drive. But I do try very hard to obey. So if you get obey. pulled over and they ask you, do you, do you know why we pulled, over, pulled you over? Yeah, because I was would talking go, fast. I was talking too fast. I was. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say, too. <laughs> yep, that's what I would say. One time I ran out of gas because I was listening to a book on tape. And oh. paying one bit of attention to my gas gauge. That was a trip Tammy and I took together. So that was pretty funny. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just one of those things. I try to obey the speed limit. I really do. And you know, when I'm riding with my husband, I make him follow the speed limit because he thinks that the speed isn't limit that hard to do. is just a suggestion. Isn't that hard to do? Why? No, isn't that hard to do? To If like you're stuck on doing the speed limit and then you have a spouse that's stuck on going fast, yeah. trying to get them to tone it down, or if they follow the car too close in front of you, or if they don't stop all the way. Yeah. Oh, my husband, he thinks I, stop lights, uh, stop signs, and speed limits are all suggestions. He doesn't think that he, and they don't apply to him. 
They do not apply to him, I'm telling you. So, yeah, we, we have a little... There's a place in our town, it's called 38th Street. And it is a four-lane street. I mean, it's a pretty wide street. And the speed limit is 30 miles an hour on this big, wide... It, it goes all the way through our town from one end to the other. It's the thoroughfare of our town, and it's 30 miles an hour. They want to make sure everybody can see everybody. <laughs> like, it's a good cruising street at night for kids. Because <laughs> you're crazy. going so slow. It's crazy, but oh, Bill, man. he never goes 30 on there. And I said, Bill... One of these days, one of these days you're going to get caught. Now, he's had his license, uh, he's had to take classes and all because he speeds too much. Yep, just saying. Telling all the family secrets here at Always in Stitches. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, I try to be. What about you, Peter? Are you a uh, speed follower? I just, man, I just stick it on cruise control, whatever the sign says. Yeah. And I just stick to it. Because you know what? What? Like, usually I get a person that'll pass me at least once a week or twice a week. Yeah. I get to the stop sign the same time they do. Right. And then, exactly. you know. Exactly. There's real, I like taking in the scenery, too. Yeah. Like, I enjoy, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm never in a hurry, so that's nice. Well, okay. So that could be a New Year's resolution for you uh, folks that don't drive the speed limit. Or what about the ones that drive the speed limit? Do you think it should be a New Year's resolution that just go a little faster? No! <laughs> no. <laughs> don't do that. We don't recommend no, it. No, we do not recommend you break the law. See, that's the law. See, I'm so black and white that I think if that's the law and you're going 56 miles an hour, you've broken the law. Even though I've done it, I know I've done it. And I didn't do it on purpose, but I know I've done it. <clears throat> okay, now pay attention to the way this is going. The dark goes down so that when you, you've got this going here, you know, your line lines up with all the darks pointing the same way. That's real important. So I'm going to flip that over. And right here, I've got a point that meets a point. And that's the only place here on the this and the other side when I do the other side. A point... That matches a point. You know, you gotta get that pin in there. Do you walk across the street if the hand is up? <laughs> okay, so the walking, man, I really had to dial it down because I would walk where there's no crosswalk in the uh -huh. middle of traffic. Uh huh, that's bad. I would walk if the hand's not up or down. Uh -huh. Because you know, if you I get mean, hit, if you get a hit and you're not in the crosswalk, yeah, it's not the driver's fault. Oh, so if I see a pedestrian and I... Never mind. Yeah, don't... Go <laughs> Never mind. You know that game you play? Ten points. <laughs> you are so bad. Oh, I know. So maybe I should hit the crosswalk. Is that what you mean by enjoying the scenery? So maybe, maybe I should use the crosswalk, huh? I think maybe that's a good idea. It's hard I, for me to want to use the crosswalk because it's like, well, I could just cross right now. Yeah. But then I got to go down to the crosswalk, hit the button, I wait for the sign. I am a little bit of a jaywalker and like in a little town. And then go to the crosswalk. Yeah. I am kind of a jaywalker in little towns. That I, are and like I do. All I, actually, I actually do use the crosswalk, but every time I do it, I think outside my head, I could just cross right now. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're still alive, Peter. Still alive. Okay, I'm getting ready to put this last one on. And again, <clears throat> in the same spot, I've got this point that I have to match up. I love it when they match up. That's always a good feeling. It's a good feeling when they match up. What's your favorite Christmas movie, Peter? Let me think. Okay. We may be here all day, folks. We might be here all day, guys. <laughs> we might be here all day. Oh, my gosh. How did I know that? Mine is Holiday Inn or Lemon Drop Kid. I don't think I've seen either of those. How, you've never seen Holiday Inn, Peter? How can you even say that you're an American? I don't think I have. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. What's it about? It's uh, Bing Crosby. And uh, Fred Astaire. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. And, of course, Fred Astaire is always falling in love with the dance partners. And uh, and 
Bing, he wants to settle down. He's done traveling. He doesn't want to do the circuit anymore. So he buys an inn in Connecticut. And uh, he's only going to work just the holidays. And he's going to have this inn available to the public and going to serve dinner and a show just on the holidays. And uh, Frank doesn't want him to quit. Frank, uh, so Frank marries the, or says he's going to marry, you know, <laughs> says he's going to marry the, uh, marry. the girl in the, in the partner, the dancing partner. And, uh, so they keep, they keep traveling. Well, <clears throat> the dancing partner, she hooks up with some other guy and leaves him high and dry, Frank Sinatra. Fred Astaire, I mean, Fred Astaire, not Frank Sinatra, Fred Astaire. So anyway, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but anyway, it's it's a production, it's a musical, oh, and it is that just that sounds wonderful. It is just wonderful. I mean, if you've not seen it, uh, White Christmas, I'm dreaming. You know, nobody can sing it like Bing, right? Right. And um, that song was popular, and uh, of course, Holiday Inn was popular. The Lemon Drop Kid is that a western? The Lemon Drop Kid is not a western. It's a, a Bob Hope movie. Bob about Hope. yeah, Bob Hope. He's a, a funny guy. He's a, a slim slam man. He uh, now I'm gonna square this up. Oh darn! I forgot to tell you about squaring up. Okay, see. Well, tell us, Don. See, I got to talking to you, and the faster I was talking, the faster I was sewing. Well, we were all watching. It was all on camera, so I know. But this piece right here, I forgot to tell you, this four patch right here has to be squared up to some ridiculous, crazy measurement. And it tells I'm you underneath. Peek. No, I'm don't do peek. it, No, Peter. I'm going to peek. Okay. Just because I personally want okay. to know. So when you square something up, it's important that you find the middle. Okay? So this increment is so weird that the middle of this increment is a sixteenth. Now, we have no 16th <laughs> measurements rulers in the shop. None whatsoever. I don't even know of a ruler company that does 16th measurements. So, a 16th That's is half, half of an, of an eighth. eighth. Right. <laughs> Just put it in there in the middle somewhere. Half of an eighth. So, <laughs> when I squared this up... I had to find the center, and this is where my arrows came in so good, because I had to find one and eleven sixteenths. One and eleven sixteenths. Now, what I did was, here's my one right there, and then I went two, four, six, eight, and there's ten sixteenths, and so I went in the middle, in between. Five and six eighths. So that would be eleven sixteenths right there. Right before the three eighths of an inch. Right before it. Halfway between that. And I did the same thing down here. And then when I laid my rulers on the lines, they lined right up and I could square it up. Okay? So then you turn it around. And you're talking about, just to be clear, you're talking about the center four patch. I'm talking about this four patch that I didn't do. I didn't do it here. And look at how big this came out. It came out to, this is supposed oh, to be a four. four and a fourth inch square. And it came out to be five and seven, uh, four and seven right. eighths. This one came out to be four and a half because I squared those so centers up. So is this the up. one where you looked at the picture? Yeah, that's the picture and the one and made and then, the block. And this is when you went back and, and read it. And this is when I went back and read it thinking, I why it. is that so big? I love it. Mm -hmm. So we've all done it. We've all been there. Don't feel bad when you do it. It's just life and it's only fabric. And can so. we say this one becomes a coaster for Peter's desk? No, this oh. one is going to get undone and oh, re no redone because it's got to go in my quilt, you know. Or my desk. Yeah, you could you could make a coaster out of it because nothing says that it doesn't look right. It looks perfectly fine. It's nice. They it's match perfect for up. a big mug too. Yeah, they match up. But so there you go. There's my Peter blocks. Here's my. Uh, there's that one. 
Let's move this over. Oh, wait a minute. I messed these up. Oh, here. Going this way. You okay. know, those little flamingo heads look like candy canes. Aren't they fun? Yeah. So now, Cappy's trying to decide whether to make her uh, sashing pieces turquoise or uh, pink. She's having some dilemma on that. Her, her cornerstones are going to be some navy print that she's used. Uh, but I know how I'm going to do mine, so... Hopefully this week I'll have a chance to work on a couple blocks so that you can kind of see how I'm going to put mine together. I'm excited about it. Yay. I hope you guys are too. Everybody stay well. I know the, the uh, crouper or, or crud or whatever you are, who's your crud is going around. So stay healthy. Keep yourself, uh, wash your hands. That's what Kathy told us today. She's going to set an alarm for every, I don't know how many minutes, and then we have to go wash our hands. She's like a sergeant around here. So um, wash your hands. Stay well. See you next Monday for our final trip. Bye-bye.